This is a very quick explanation of a technique called fluorescent in, in situ hybridization of fish. So fish is going to involve uh, two pieces of DNA. So let's um, diagram, diagram those out first. The first piece of DNA is going to be a probe piece of DNA. And this is a piece of DNA which is uh, created using some different techniques in genetic engineering. You can take some DNA and make it by PCR or you can take a piece of DNA and you can cut it up with restriction enzymes, which you've probably heard about. So there's our probe, and, and the probe is just a short piece of DNA. And then we have uh, a piece of DNA which is the target, and this is the chromosomal DNA that we're going to try and get the probe to bind to. And so this is to tell us um, the location of a gene that the probe corresponds to. Um, and so this is done with eukaryotic cells uh, on a slide, and so you take cells um, usually cells in mitosis, and you um, treat them chemically, and then you drop them onto a slide. So this is just that little gray area on the edge of a slide. When you drop the cells onto the slide, they kind of burst open, and their metaphase chromosomes just spread out on the surface of the slide. And so that's called a metaphase spread. Um, and so then if we blow up just a little piece of one of these chromosomes, drawing is not fantastic, but you get the point. If we blow up one of these chromosomes, and don't forget, this is our target chromosomal DNA. If we blow up one of those chromosomes, um, we're just going to draw in here a piece of double-stranded DNA. And this is going to be our target. And so these are two strands joined together by hydrogen bonding between the complementary DNA bases. So let's go back over to our probe on the left. So um, the first thing we have to do to our probe is we have to make it single-stranded. So we can do that chemically um, by treating it with something like formamide, or we can heat it up to break the hydrogen bonds. And so let's make our probe single-stranded. There's our single-stranded probe, and these just represent, these little short lines represent the bases. Um, and then we can chemically treat the probe uh, so that we add chemical groups which are, for example, fluorescence. Um, when I was a graduate student, we did this. We used to do it um, with radioactivity, but now we can do it with um, uh, fluorophores. So there are a whole range of different fluorophores, and they glow all kinds of different colors. So um, let's go over back over to our target, and let's denature this, because if we want our probe to hybridize to our target, both the probe and the target have to be single-stranded. So let's make our our target single-stranded. So again, this just represents a piece of single-stranded DNA coming from our target, and we would be treating the whole slide uh, with a chemical which makes uh, the target chromosomes single-stranded. So I'm just going to put here single-stranded DNA so we don't forget. Obviously there would be another complementary piece down here. We're only going to worry about one of these, just like we only worry about one of the probe strands. And so then, if we mix the probe onto the, the slide with the metaphase chromosomes which have been denatured. If we bring those two things together, anything that the probe is complementary to in the target will lead to the probe hybridizing via hydrogen bonding to the target. So this is still based on the complementarity of DNA. And so remember that this piece of probe DNA, and the probe is this piece at the bottom, and our target is this piece at the top. Anywhere there's complementarity between the probe and the target, we would see hybridization between the probe and the target. So um, that will tell us that wherever we see fluorescence on the target DNA, that's where the gene that corresponds to the probe sequence um, could be found.